With 14,000 people, Tavistock is the largest market town in West Devon. We love to stay in Tavistock because of its location. It's a beautiful town, but it also is conveniently located so that we can drive down to the Devon coast, we can drive over to Cornwall to the Cornish coast, or we can go to my favorite otter sanctuary in Buckfastly, Devon. So even though we've stayed here in Tavistock a couple times for a number of days, we decided we needed to show you around Tavistock so that you know what cool things are here. I'm standing in front of the old church, which is in the middle of town. The church dates back to 1318. For over 900 years, two powerful institutions shaped Tavistock. One was the Dukes of Bedford, the other was the Benedictine Monastery. So here we have the ruins of the Benedictine Monastery, and of course Henry VIII uh, dissolved that uh, back in the 16th century, and all that we have left are these ruins and then the church that um, replaced them. Tavistock's most famous son is Sir Francis Drake. He was born here in 1540, and there's a huge statue of him at the end of Plymouth Road. Which is close to our hotel. It was Sir Francis Drake that defeated the Spanish Armada. He was the first Englishman to circumnavigate the globe. The stone from his farmhouse was dismantled, we found out interestingly enough, and used to help build the Trenchard Manor where we ate lunch the other day. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend our Lou Trenchard video, which is linked in the eye above and in the description below. It includes a look at the beautiful house, our delicious lunch, an interesting interview with the vicar next door, and best of all, some amazing drone footage. For generations, the Dukes of Tavistock have owned most of Tavistock. And as a result, most of the buildings that you see in Tavistock today were commissioned and paid for by that family. At the heart of the town center is the famous market. We've been to a lot of market towns, and in fact, I talk about how much I love market towns in my British countryside video, which I'll also provide a link to. This is very unusual for a market to be so large. And it's cool how it's still a busy market today using these ancient structures there's different areas within the market that have, that have antiques, cheese, butchers, etc. There is also a pretty extensive selection of hats, caps, and scarves on offer if you are in the market for headwear. Tavistock's market hall is huge and has additional halls adjacent to it. Rather than having a farmer's market on a Saturday, the market is most days. Well, when there's not a pandemic lockdown, that is. It is great fun to explore and browse the merchandise for sale. As for me, I very predictably bought some tea towels. We stopped for lunch at a favorite restaurant of ours called Church Lane. It is conveniently located within a few steps of the market halls. And as the name implies, it is located on Church Lane, directly across from the church. We were able to enjoy some outdoor dining with a delicious and healthy sharing board of hummus, focaccia, olives, artichoke, falafel, pesto, and feta cheese. We loved wandering around the town of Tavistock admiring the granite buildings and the many lovely examples of Gothic Revival architecture, including the Market Hall itself and the lovely Bedford Hotel, which was built on the remains of the Benedictine Abbey. Of course, I have to point out my most favorite fun fact, that the monks of the Tavistock Benedictine Abbey are credited with inventing the Devon cream tea. In case you are unaware of my obsession with cream tea and afternoon tea, I recommend you watch my afternoon tea video for all the scoop on tea. We decided to walk over to the old Abbey Wall, which is located next to the river. We didn't see this area last time we visited Tavistock, but it is a serene and beautiful little treasure tucked away on the edge of town. Here next to the ancient thousand-year-old wall on the border of the abbey 
is the Tavi River. And the river walk, which you can follow alongside the river and the wall of the old abbey. It's actually very peaceful and beautiful. You don't see or hear the town at all. At the end of the river walk is the entrance to the Tavistock Park. For a relatively small town, Tavistock has this huge park, which stretches out for a long time. I didn't see any ducks in the river, but there are lots of noisy ducks here in the canal. So this is the Tavistock to Plymouth Canal, and it was um, mostly built by French prisoners from the Napoleonic War. On the edge of Tavistock's park is this sensory garden, which I'm sure early in summer is full of wonderful flowers. But it's September, so most of them are not at their peak, but there are still some lovely poppies. Ian had to point out these lovely magenta flowers in the garden. That's part of the park. I have to stay on brand and show you all the magenta flowers that are still in bloom. Okay, I have never seen anything like this before. Here on the edge of Tavistock is this park that is designed for mountain bike riding and jumping. One more thing I need to mention about my visit to Tavistock. Because it is located very close to Cornwall, there were a few pasty purveyors in town, like this one called Warren's Bakery. It claims to be the oldest Cornish pasty maker in the world. Well, that's all well and good, but I was very determined to do my pasty taste test in Cornwall, and Tavistock is in Devon. So after a lot of promising, the long-awaited Cornish pasty video really is coming soon, hopefully next Tuesday. I'm officially calling that video Pasty Quest, so please look out for it on my channel and be sure to give it a watch. You are cordially invited to check out my Devon playlist to discover all the amazing places we visited around Tavistock on our many adventures. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.